what we're going to do is we're going to paint our claws. Start off with some paint. Got some white paint here. I also got some yellow paint. Uh, poster paint will do. Anything that basically stains your latex. And then you'll also need some latex. Wish you can pick up. This was I picked up a few years ago, so I've had it for quite a while. Not a lot left now. And pour that into a sealable container. Now what you want to do is you want to do approximately a 40 to 45% mix. You'll probably get away with less, but what you're basically doing is staining your latex. So I'm going to do some... I'll do. And some yellow paint. That's going to be the basis of my claws. There you go. Get a stick and mix. Now the colours will always be lighter than you intend. So they will darken once the latex becomes see-through because latex will go see-through unless you put successive layers on. Um, it goes really, really clear. If you want a clear look, you can do that. I reckon... That's a good colour actually. I reckon a little bit more yellow. That should be enough. Put that to one side. Right. Be able to seal it. Get a good lid. Make sure it's an airtight seal. And then you can store it in the fridge. And it'll last quite a long time in the fridge. So once you've got that, you'll need a sponge. Well, I use a sponge. You can use brushes, but you tend to be buying brushes and replacing them every few applications. But as sponge is fairly cheap and pretty easy to use, sponge will do. It also seems to last a lot longer. And what you do is you place, I'm using my latex bowl, your claws onto a former. In this case I'm using a latex bowl and I'm putting little bits in between the fingers just to keep the fingers separate. Right, and what you do is you've got all that together. That will do, get you up. Just take your latex and give it a nice thin coating of latex. The more you do layers, it's like any painting, the more layers the better. And you just work your way down. You can dab. That produces a stippling effect. And I think it works rather well on metal weaponry. But as we're going for a smooth claw look, you can squeeze it. That's the thing about it. Is you can squeeze it into all the little nooks right, and just work your way down see how thin that is you can still see it through and don't worry about this end the only reason I'm painting all this way down is just to give it an extra bit of um, extra bit of protection not protection but with the glue once this sets once you've got several layers setting it means it's not going to come away from the glove and still be pliable. So it's just a bit of extra security on the glove. And do that on all your claws. So if you can see that. There you go. And do that on all your claws. And there we have it. I've now coated all the claws. A little hint that I got was that if once you've got a good coating on you can actually use your finger to smooth it off and it comes off really really well uh, you can also put your sponge in the tub with the latex seal it up and it keeps everything nice and fresh and just leave that to dry and just do um, I'd do about six seven maybe ten coatings now uh, on each successive coating it'll get more and more opaque and I'll show you that later on right uh, what I've got left now is we've coated a few coats of um, latex. You don't want too many, but I've done quite a few so far, and as you can see, it's come up a quite a lovely colour. Now, all we need to do is give it some shadow, a little bit of brown ink, Citadel colour. And what I'm going to do is take a brush, like so, and I'm just going to dab in areas that I want a bit of shade. Uh, so, around there. And because it's watered down, 
you don't actually need that much. All you're doing is giving a bit of shade to the various different areas of the glove. See, it gives quite a nice highlight. So what I'm trying to do is come up the blade, just give it a bit of shade and shadow, like so. You can use any colour you like, but in this case I'm using brown. Uh, try and match it to the colour of what you're doing. So if you're doing things like steel claws or anything like that, you want to be using, let's say you've got a metal look on the claws, you want to be using a blue ink. Do the next set. I've got them all. Uh, if you're doing fleshy types, you want to be using something like a, a pink or a dark purple. Uh, a little bit of blue ink also goes well. It's, it's just using an artist's palette in colours, really. Nearly done. Let's have a look. There's your finished product. You can see where it's darkened in there. Right, now we've done that, what we're doing, I'm going to take our latex and run it through. We're not going to go all the way down, but what we're doing is now we're doing a highlighted version. Just to the end. Make sure your ink is dry. Before you do this. We're not going all the way down to what we call the quick. And then smooth it off. As you see. A little bit of this and go on this. You can see the, the ink actually shows through this layer. If you not know what you're doing, don't do it like this, do it with a sponge because this actually is quite difficult to do. There we go, that's what I wanted. Pass it up like so. You see, we now have areas of darkness and lightness. Don't worry about it being neat as yet. But basically, you apply more to the top as you go along until you get it quite good colour, and then we'll do highlights. Right, what you're going to do now is dry brush it with a bit of white, just ordinary paint. As it's a dry brush, don't need a lot. All you're doing is dry brush and a little bit of white paint. So you take a very, very dry brush. And you do something very, very similar, like an artist's palette. So you get a very, very dry effect on the brush. Then you just go over. Highlight it where you want to highlight it. And you should get an effect very similar to, that's probably the best one, that. That one is a little poor. <laughs> and then do that on both your gloves. Alright, for the next bit, I've now highlighted and dry brushed it. For the next bit you're going to need this. Isoflex Special Primer, primer and it's the clear version that you want. Uh, basically it's a roof sealant. It's, uh, it rubberizes once it dries. Now I've decanted a small amount into a jar, which I've sealed, if I can unseal it, with some wax. 
and basically that'll keep it fresh. Um, this stuff smells awful. Do it in a well ventilated room. Uh, don't bother using brushes because they're just knack of the brushes. I find a little bit of old sponge works just as well. And also wear gloves. <laughs> whatever. Also have a bit of talcum powder available as well. But wear gloves and this should do it. And you just dab in, wring it out and just coat things. Now this is quite runny stuff. So it will drip to the end if it's pointing down. So you can get them to point up but just give it a really good coating. Don't overdo it. You don't need to overdo it. And what this does it just protects the latex and stops it being sticky. There you go. Now what you want to do is two coats of that and you're done. We'll do the second one. Right. Your isoflex has gone off now. But it is going to be still slightly sticky. So what you're going to do, you take some baby powder, gently cover it. There you go. You close with the baby powder. This will lighten it up, but also stop it being sticky. And uh, once you wash it off, all the excess off, it will actually darken down again. And that stops them from sticking together. See? So then you're left with your claws. Now you could leave them like that, but we're going to do one more thing to them. Which I hope is going to work, but it's going to be fun. What I need to do is clean all of the excess off right. the glove. Finally, what you do is you now, now use something to cover the glove with. Um, I've used the impact adhesive and some fur that I've got lying around and you should end up with something that looks a bit like that. See, you can you can curl it in. Plenty of bend there in the claws themselves. So, okay, and as you can see, I've put a palm on it. I've just got to lean it up a little bit, but as you can see. Put a palm on it just to cover it up. Left the thumb open. It's just so you can pull your thumb in or keep your thumb flat so it's out of the way. And then you can keep, you can strike. So you've got your arm. And that's what you want to be able to do. That's it. Of course, you don't have to do it that way. That was my first attempt. This is my second attempt to show you. My second attempt. My as you can see, all I've used is a glove and I've latexed the whole thing to look like a hand where the nails have grown extra long. So you can see the whole thing, extra blood. And it folds in. You can see the mechanics behind it. And here we go. And all that is is an ordinary gardening glove covered in latex. There you go. Alright, that's how you do it.